Taste, Taste. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, everybody, and good morning. Good morning, and welcome to the service for First Fellowship Charlotte. We just thank God that on this Memorial Day that we are all here in the land of the living, Amen. and we honor those of our loved ones that have gone on before us. But I just thank God, hallelujah, that the blood is still running warm in our vein. Amen. Amen. And there is just so much to be grateful for and so much to be thankful for. I also thank God, I'm Evangelist Deborah Dozier and my daughter uh, Jamila Martin for the opportunity to stand here. We're the rams in the bushes today, okay? <laughs> Pastor Leslie is, uh, is taking a vacation this weekend, so we volunteered to step in. So y'all pray for us and we're gonna pray for y'all and we're gonna get this thing started, amen? And y'all sing along and help Oh us yes, out. <laughs> please sing along. This is participation, not spectator. <laughs> we need you, we need you like we never needed you before, amen? amen. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name on today, Father God. Hallelujah, let us just consecrate our hearts and our minds unto the Lord and show our gratitude by just saying two little words. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I 
just want to thank you, Lord. Ah, oh, let's just love on Jesus. Hallelujah. Save my soul. Save my soul. You save me. You save. sanctuary and at home. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah. We could do nothing without the anointing of God falling on us. Hallelujah. We are consecrating ourselves and setting ourselves apart for worship unto the Lord. And on this Memorial Day weekend holiday, God has blessed my daughter, the psalmist, Jamila, to create this song. And it's about our loved ones that have gone on before us. And as we honor each and every one of the individuals, veterans, and those of our family members alike, we that know the Lord, that know they died in the Lord, we know that if we live right, if our time we have left, that we will see them again. Amen. On the other side, <laughs> each and every day, hallelujah, we strive. God to welcome us in. Thank you, Jesus. Be blessed. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Right now, though my 
my heart is filled with sorrow. I take comfort in the promise of tomorrow's sun. I feel there's an emptiness inside. I'm missing peace from my inner core. I have faith. For some day we'll be together beyond the memories and dreams that keep me warm. And even though my heart cries right now, I stay strong because I know I'll see you again. I'll see you. the side I'll see you on the other side I'll see you on the other side see I know yes sir that we left so much unfinished. There's never time enough to complete all we started. When you left, you took a piece of me with you. I feel I'll never be quite whole again. But they tells a story I hold on to that again I will be able to look upon your face we'll meet again on the other side where the cloud meets the sky of life's revolving door I'll see you on the other side, I'll see you. On the other side, I'll see you. On the other side. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now we're going to have the welcome by Deacon. Kimsey, <laughs> yes, ma'am. <laughs> Hallelujah. We bless your name on today, Jesus. Yes, ma'am. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And she's gathering the names of those that have come to worship with us today. So we just thank God. Hallelujah. Promise in tomorrow, hope and joy. All of our faith lies in. Hallelujah. Living the best life here mm, and entering to our eternal rest. Joy, peace, love. Thank you, Jesus. Deacon Kinsey. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, First Fellowship and friends. I'm here to welcome you today, to welcome everyone and especially our visitors. We do have some visitors' cards. Um, would you please stand when I say your name? Ms. Cheryl Gardner, Ms. Jane Smith, Mr. James Washington. Amen. Are there other visitors in our midst? Thank you, Ms. Katrina. I just want to say that you are welcome here at First Fellowship anytime. We are so happy that you have come to be a part of our service, and may you get a blessing from the word and the lovely music. Amen. I also just want to um, honor our veterans. This is Memorial Day, and I just, if, are there any veterans here? Amen. Please stand. Amen. Let's give them a hand. God bless you. These are some brave young men and women. They go to war for our country. They are willing to lay down their lives for us. God be praised. Have a blessed day.
Good morning, everyone. It is such an awesome privilege to be here with you in the house of the Lord one more time. I'm so glad to be here. I'm so glad to see our guests. Let me personally welcome you myself. Amen. Because, you know, many times you go to many churches, you don't ever hear from the pastor. You hear someone else says, the pastor's so happy for you to be here. But then you don't ever hear the pastor say, I'm so happy for you to be here. Well, I'm overjoyed. Amen. Praise God. And now I'm going to impose a rule that we impose in my house. In fact, it's not not me who imposes it in our house, nor is it my wife or the children. It's the dog. Amen. The dog in our family is the official greeter, all right? When you come to our house, he will meet you at the front door. He'll love on you like you've been there forever and ever, but when you get ready to leave, he's going to growl, he's going to fuss, he's going to show out, because what he does not want you to do is to leave his house. And so, I think my dog has the right uh, mentality, the right idea. Now, I'm going to love on you. I'm going to make you feel welcome. But when you get up to leave today, I'm going to growl at you. Because I don't want you to leave. I want you to stay, to come back, and to worship the Lord God with us here this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Um, again, good morning. Let me, before we get started, let me read, let me double down on what Deacon Kenzie said. Thank you to our veterans. Thank you. Thank you. You were willing to write a check where the payment amount was blank. And you were willing to let someone else fill in what the payment amount would be, including up to your lives. And you did that without shame. You did that without hesitation. You did that because you wanted to do it. And we thank you for that. We thank you for that. Just being on, on moment's notice, ready to, we thank you for that. And it's because of your sacrifices that we can even be here today to worship God in spirit and in truth. You know, there are some people around the world that want to worship God. But they cannot because no one defended their liberties. No one defended their rights. But God has so blessed us to put us in a country where we have persons, young people at that, who are willing every day to pick up uh, uh, arms, whatever is necessary, to defend our liberties and our rights so that we could have a chance uh, to uh, be here today to celebrate. So I don't know who has veterans in their families or, or active military in your family, but today and tomorrow, you ought to reach out to them and say thank you. Amen. Don't, don't, don't make this just about the barbecue ribs and chicken you're going to eat later on, all right? Make this about honoring the sacrifice that these young men and women have made. Amen. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to read all some names on our intercessory prayer list. Amen. I'm going to let you read what they're asking for, all right? And then at the end, if there's any names we need to add to the list, we'll add to the list, okay? Beginning with Margie Lindsay, Vivian Williams, Rufus Pettis, William and Ramona Charlton, C.J. Charlton and family, Michael Charlton and family, Irma Johnson and family, Irma Butler and family, Queen, Queen Rembert and family, Bobby Vaughn, Sister Eunice Farr, amen, praise God, Sister Hattie Gamble Easley, Sister Ethel Young, and Brother Milton Young Jr., Brother James Groves, Brother Sean and Sister Carol Jones, amen, Brother Walter and Sister Sylvia Brown, Brother David Goins, Sister Vita Harold, Sister Diane Marion, Brother Lee Scott, uh, amen, Brother Marshawn Jones, Sister Suzanne Smith, Brother Marvin and Sue Hartsell, Brother Daryl Perkins, Little Elijah, uh, a sister that's gave us her prayer request that used the tag Deborah. Amen. Praise God. Uh, Ashlyn Curry. Amen. Demetrius Curry. Amaya Rucker. Sis, brother uh, Jacoby Tyson. Sister Kenya Curry. Till. Sister Aaron McNeil. Sister Kim Clark. The Black Welder family. Brother Chris Smith. Uh, br brother Kenneth and Sister Angela Wright. Uh, Sister Donna Reagan. Brother Nicholas and Sister Lauren Hill. The Yancey family. 
Kelly, Sister Kelly Ladon Smith, Sister Chris Spiller, uh, Sister Keisha Moon, Brother Brian Inman, uh, the Williams family, Sister Stephanie Roberson, Brother Michael and Alpha Foray, uh, the Whitener family, Brother Curtis L. Bryce, the One Two Three Rhythm to Read summer program, Sister Carol White, Sister Tracy Payton, Sister Andrea Gardner, Brother Derek Jones, Sister Guyanese Clement, Brother Robert Wilson, Sister Ava Topping, Sister Omicia Barnes, Sister Gail D.K., Sisters Yolanda and Tanya Dees, the Cook family, Brother Ricky McArthur, Brother James Colby, the Rogers family, Brother Orrin Reeder, uh, Sister Peggy Menace, Sister Tracy Bell, and Brother Chris Cook. Are there any names of anyone we would like to add to our intercessory prayer? Let's go ahead, Sister Eva. Okay, Congressman Mel Watts and his family in the death of his mother. Go ahead, Brother Jones. Howard, brother Howard Barkley suffered a stroke this morning. Go ahead, Deke. Purcell, Bowser, and family. Amen. Are there any other names we want to add to the list? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Seeing other names, visitors, do you have a name? You can call out your name to you. You're in the house now. You can call out the name if there's someone you want us to pray with you for. Amen. If there's no other names, then we're going to go to God in prayer. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, first of all, God, we thank you for this day. For this is the day that you have made, God. We are glad. We are rejoicing in it. Father God, you have carved out a unique place for us where, God, we are able to now approach your throne and to lay at your feet those things that are troubling us, those things that are hurting us, those things that are harming us, those things that are keeping us, God, from being the, the Christian disciples and stewards that you call us to be. Father God, all of us have some issue that's dogging us out and hounded us, hounding us and haranguing us. And God, while my issue may not be the same as my neighbor's issue, it's these issues are beating us up, beating us down, beating us all around. And God, to overcome them, God, to move past them, God, to allow you to be able to transform our mess into our message and our tests into our testimonies, we need you to show up and show out. We need you, God, to deal with some things. We need you to address some things. We need you to heal some things. We need you to reconcile some things. We need you to resolve some things. We need you to employ some things. We need you to deconstruct some things and to construct some things. We need you, God, to make functional again and to eradicate the dysfunctional. God, we need you to love, to care, to nurture, to, to comfort, to so, God, we need you to ordain and consecrate. God, we need you to educate and edify. We need you to equip and, and empower, God. God, there is a plethora of things that we need you to do, and we need you to do them right now so that, God, we may get back on track in serving you. So, God, have your way. Move as only you can move. Work as only you can work. So that, God, we are able to join together as one choir, as one chorus, to give you one praise about how good and faithful and dependable and loving you really are so that the world may come to know you in the truth and the freedom of their sins. Father God, thank you for this moment of allowing us to touch and agree to intercede on behalf of others because God, the day is coming when we are going to need someone to intercede on our behalves. Where we won't be able to open our mouths or to raise our hands or to articulate uh, names, God. When we'll need someone to stand up and say, I'm praying for Pastor Al. I'm praying for Deacon Jones. I'm praying for Deacon Charlton. I'm praying for Sister Eunice. I'm praying for Deacon Kinsey. Because, God, we are in the need of prayer. God, we love you. 
And we thank you and we pray that you would do what you need to do so that you get all the praise, glory, and honor you so richly deserve. Continue to allow your Holy Spirit to rest, rule, and abide upon this worship service. And God, let us leave here differently than we came, edified, empowered, and equipped to go out this week and be the servants that you've called us to be. It's in your sons mighty matchless marvelous magnificent name that we do pray amen amen evangelist doge is gonna come on back up come on amen amen and let me go ahead and say this amen i, I believe in giving people their roses while they're alive amen praise god amen i didn't know they could sing like this i knew they could dance amen but they singing like this lord have mercy we we got to get them up and singing again amen <laughs> well i thank you pastor <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, man, what a wonderful prayer. What a wonderful welcome. Hey, so we're all relaxed? Ready to go? Ready to give God some praise? All right. We're, you ready? Okay, we're going back to back in the day. You remember before we had all of that sitting over there? And we had to use the instruments that God gave us, which was our hands and our feet and our voices? Yeah, so let's try to do that. She got to clap because I'd be off. Yes, put it together. Come on. Joyful noise unto the Lord. Yes. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget. How you set me free, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. How can I forget what you've done for me? How can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Jesus, Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you, how you set me free. Jesus, Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Oh, how can I, how can I forget? What you done for me? <laughs> how can I forget how you set me free? How can I forget how you brought me out? Jesus, I'll never forget, no, never. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Everybody, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, everybody, praise the Lord, oh, if God's been good to you, stand up on your feet, oh, if God's been good to you, stand up on your feet, oh, my God's been good to you. Stand up on your feet. Oh, if God's been good to you, stand up on your feet. Oh, he healed my body. Say amen. Oh, if he healed your body, say amen. If he healed your body, say amen. Oh, if he healed your body, well, all right, all right. 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 Cause I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. I'm a soldier in the army. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Oh, I'm a soldier in the army. I got my war 
goes on in the army of the Lord. I got my war clothes on in the army. I got my war clothes on in the army of the Lord. I got my war clothes on in the army. Oh, if I die, let me die in the army Woo! of the Lord. Oh, if I die, let me die in the army. <laughs> oh, if I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. Oh, if I die, let me die in the army. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Oh, praise the Lord, everybody. And praise the Lord. Oh, cause Jesus, I'll never forget what you done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget. How you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for the Lord and we welcome our pastor on today. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. A -a -a Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Here I come. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Amen. I, I tell you, boy, it is amazing what God is doing in our midst. Amen. 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 I keep telling folks time and time again, uh, he's birthing something incredible here. Now, the, what's, the onus is on us to trust him. Amen. Because right now, the seedling is making its way up through the dirt. It's getting ready to poke out the ground. And the temptation is as you're walking by the planter or the pot, and you don't see the green break, seedling breaking through, is to think that nothing has happened. But you don't realize anyone who's an arborist would tell you a plant's most the most difficult time is between breaking its shell and getting out of the ground. Once it's out the ground, believe it or not, it has everything it needs to survive. All it needs is water and sunlight. It has the root system, everything, but it's getting there. And I believe God is developing us that to the point where when others start to see us, we, have, we will have already been developed in such a way that we would be a ministry that is bringing him glory, a ministry that is enabling people to understand who they are in God, and a ministry that is empowering people to serve him in their respective callings. Amen. Praise God. So, amen. I, we've been praying because, amen, there was a time when Pastor Leslie wasn't here. You had to hear me sing. Amen. Amen. And truly God loves us because God said, Pastor Al, I'm never letting you sing again as worship leader. Amen. And so if he's blessing us that way, there's more blessings yet to come. And we just have to hold on to it. Amen. Amen. If you have your Bibles, why don't you turn with me to the fourth gospel, the gospel of John. We're going to look at the ninth chapter, the first five verses of that scripture. John chapter 9, verses 1 through 5. If you're able to stand for the reading of the word, we ask that you would stand. Then reading from the New Revised Standard Version, the word of God reads as follows. As he walked along, Jesus saw a blind man from birth. His disciples asked Jesus, Rabbi, who sinned? this man or his parents that he was born blind jesus answered neither this man nor his parents sinned he was born blind so that god's works might be revealed in him we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day night is coming when no one can work as long as i am in the world i am the light 
of the world. Thus far, the word of God, you may be seated in his presence. Amen. The title of our sermon this morning is The Setup, Part 1 recognizing our inability to see spiritually the setup part one recognizing our inability to see spiritually amen when we look at john chapter 9 it opens with jesus's encounter with an unnamed and otherwise unidentified man we're not told what is, where he's from. We're not even told which tribe he descends from. We're not told his connections to anyone. There's nothing that identifies this man. There's nothing that sets him apart from the larger community other than the fact that he is blind. He is physically unable to see and being blind meant that he spent every day of his life sitting on the side of the road begging. You got to understand during antiquity, if you were born with any kind of defect, physical, mental, or emotional, you were understood to be under judgment from God, that God, that either you or your parents had committed some kind of sin and God was punishing you. As such, your life was spent relegated on the outskirts of town. You weren't allowed inside the city. You were not allowed inside the local synagogue. You definitely were not allowed inside the temple. You were kept outside. You were ostracized. You were relegated. You were isolated. You were treated with scorn and contempt. People look down their nose at you. They didn't want to have anything to do with you. You were lower than lower than low. Scum was higher than you. Uh, and you and you were someone that was mistreated at every possible turn. And John chapter 9 begins with Jesus and his disciples encountering this man on the side of the road. Now remember I just told you that people at this time assume that if you were born with a physical, mental, or emotional defect, you were under judgment. We see this right here in the scripture. The disciples seeing the man on the side of the road, hearing Jesus said he's been blind since birth, the first thing they asked Jesus is, Rabbi, who sinned, his, him or his parents? In their minds, they, they can only conceive that God would, would do this to someone as a form of punishment. In fact, they are doing what we do today. Amen. Can I, can I just walk through this for a second? Can I just deal with this for a second? Amen. Come on. Someone in here needs to tell the truth and shame the devil that there are times when you are going through something and you are catching hell and everything you're trying to do turns out to be not. When everything goes bust when people are ostracizing you and, and, and treating you like you're scum of the earth someone will look at you and the first thing they will say is he or she must have done something wrong in fact we see people all the time being accused of, of, of wrongdoing and the first thing we say is they wouldn't have been accused if they hadn't done something wrong well let me tell you something let me let you know that you live in a world where where you can do everything right, you can do everything perfect, and people still will find a reason to accuse you of doing something wrong. In fact, if you listen to what Jesus says, Jesus answers the disciples and says, no, neither his parents nor he had committed any sin. That explicit answer did comes with an implicit uh, 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 statement. The implicit statement is if they haven't sinned, then they've done everything right. They've gone to the synagogue. They've paid their tithes and offering. They're participating in ministry. They showed up for every church conference, and they were in the place whenever they needed to be. They did everything right, and in doing everything right, they still birthed a son. They still were required to raise a son who was blind. You can do everything right. You can do everything that 
God wants you to do and you still can suffer. You don't believe me? Ask Job. The word said there was no person more faultless than Job. In fact, I, I, I would dare to argue that if you want to find someone more perfect than Job, you got to look at Jesus. Because that's the only other person that the Bible re refers to as being faultless. Everyone else had a fault. David had a fault. Hezekiah had a fault. Samuel had a fault. Uh, Elijah had a fault. Elisha had a fault. But Job was faultless. And in him being faultless, he, that did not stop him from losing his wife, losing his kids, losing his house, losing his possessions, losing his status, losing everything. And come to find out the reason why he lost it was not because he did anything wrong but because the enemy wanted to see if he took everything away from Job would Job curse God sometimes some of the things that are going on are above your pay grade some things that are happening are happening in the spiritual realm and you are unaware of it in Job's case Job caught hell because a devil was upset with God he didn't even know he was kept why he was catching hell in this man's case he is living with blindness because God wants to get glory through him now if you're paying attention if you listen to me something should have sounded wrong with what I just said Amen. Uh oh, it's right, Brother Deacon uh, Jones. Uh, God wants to get glory in the man, so he birthed him blind. All right, y'all gonna get this. Amen. We're gonna work with this for a couple seconds. God wants praise, He wants honor, He wants recognition. So He births a man blind. Now, I know when we read this scripture, we assume that he's a young man. Because in our minds, we don't want to think that he's, that there it is, that he's a grown man. I tell you, I will be 48 this year. And when I read this scripture, I see a 48-year-old man that's had to live for 47 years without the ability to see. And, and on his 48th birthday, he meets Jesus and he learns that the reason why he has spent 47 of his years blind is because God wants to get glory out of this. I'm going to be honest with you. This is Pastor Al. Amen. I know you want to be dignified and sit there like you trust God and everything. Like God ain't never done anything wrong to you. But Pastor Al will have some problems with God. I mean, God, you got to subject me. You got to make me blind. You got to force me to live on the outskirts of town. You force me to live with someone's scorn, someone's rejection, someone's ostracism, someone's isolation, someone's racism, someone's hatred, someone's xenophobia, someone's prejudice, all because you want glory out of me? In fact, let me put it in, in context that some of us can get. The hell you catching right now? The hell that you up against, the hell that you going through right now. Imagine if you found out that the only reason why you're going through the hell that you're going through right now is because God wants to get glory out of you. I mean, do, do, doesn't the flower, doesn't God get glory out of the flower blooming and showing its beauty? What kind of glory does God get out of the flower growing up with a bunch of weeds that choke it out? Doesn't God get glory out of you by you living your life the way you should? Doesn't God get glory out of you by you testifying and witnessing about God? Then why then God needs to put you through the most, uh, most painful, the most uh, 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 damning, the most hurtful thing just for him to get glory out of it? In fact, the people that we're going to encounter out in the world, when they see this scripture, that's the question they're going to ask. If your God is going to get glory out of me and my suffering, then why then do I need to come to church and worship him? If I'm already going to suffer out there, there's no need to come in here. Why, why is the suffering in here different than out there? I argue, and I put this argument to you today, we're blind. 
that Jesus chose this man, that God chose this man in his physical blindness to demonstrate to us how spiritually blind we are. Now, I know we don't want to hear that because guess what? We saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. We baptize a Holy Ghost power. We are the children of God. We are the descendants of God. Amen. That we have accepted God uh, uh, through Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, that we've made the confession, that we uh, uh, have come here and been baptized in the Holy Spirit, and therefore, Pastor Al, what you're not going to tell me is I'm spiritually blind. Well, guess what? Here were the disciples. They walked with God. They talked with God. He told them that they were his own. He even spent nights with them. Amen. Amen. I, it's like my brother. Amen. My brother, he's not here right now. Uh, but growing up, you think my brother didn't have his own room with his own bedroom. Because every night he was on my bottom bunk. Growing up, there was never a night that my brother, I, I didn't know that my brother could sleep in his own room until I went to college. But growing up, every night, that little nappy head joker was on my bottom bunk, singing and talking all night long instead of sleeping. That's because he wanted to be with his big brother. He wanted to be wherever his big brother was. And I learned that now. Here's the thing. Jesus, the big brother, is with his little brothers. They are with him. If anyone who should know him and be able to see exactly as God requires them to see should be the disciples. But we see they are spiritually blind. Don't get offended when I say we're spiritually blind. In fact, thank God. Because just like with this blind man sitting on the side of the road, God said enough is enough. Enough time has passed. And now that he's here, he's here so that we can see. He's here so that we can perceive things spiritually. He's here so that we can discern what, what is of him and what's not of him. So here, how do we see spiritually? Amen. How are we blind? Give me my first point, please. Amen. God demonstrates just how blind we are to the issues and troubles that his people people experience daily. He demonstrates just how blind we are. Now check this out. Jesus is walking down the street. That's what we, we're told. He's walking. And as he's walking, he sees the blind man sitting on the side of the road. Now I know that's nothing to shout, shout about. It doesn't say, it just says he sees him. But you got to remember the context in which he sees him in. He sees someone that no one else wants to see. Come on, tell the truth, shame the devil. When you go to work, there's Bobby sitting outside the front entrance of your, of your workplace. And every day, Bobby's doing the same thing. Got his hand cut like this. Got the little cardboard cut out talking about, uh, bless you, bless you. I thank God for you. Do you have five cents to spare? And what we do, I'm going to pretend like you Bobby, all right? See, see, this is what you get for being the visitor. Amen. See, you become family. I won't mess with you. Amen. But amen. Amen. So this, 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 is, this is my encouragement to become family so I can go back to messing with Deacon Kenzie, all right? Hey, so you Bobby. And so I come into work. And, and, and now... And, I don't want to look at Bobby, but I can see him in my peripheral. And so as I come in work, this is the walkway. What I do, I come as far as I can over to the edge of the walkway to walk like this. And Bobby's asking, and I don't even look down at Bobby. Because I don't want to see him. I don't praise God that but for the grace of God, there goes I. Instead, what I say is, Bobby, you got in this on your own. You didn't stay in school. You didn't take that job seriously. You didn't appreciate the woman God gave you. So look at you now, homeless, on the road, on the road begging. If you had done what you're supposed to do, Bobby, you wouldn't be here. Now, we don't say that a lot. That's just what we think. Come on, tell the truth. Come on. We, we, we've run into the sister, young Sally that for whatever reason has found herself having to take care of a set of kids by herself. Amen. Come on now. We don't know what happened, and it's not important for us to know what happened. All we know is where she is right now, and we know she can use some help. 
Some of us are the local little league football, basketball, baseball coaches, seeing she got little boys that would love to play on your team. And you won't go pick them up because guess what? If she had been a responsible adult, she wouldn't have had these kids knowing that she couldn't take care of them. Here it is. You've been asking God to bless you and to enable you to be a blessing to others. you making money hand over fist. You can afford the extra $125 it costs to put these two kids in the league with you, but you don't do it because guess what? You're looking down your nose that you don't see them the way God sees them. God does not see someone that's down on their luck. God sees a son or a daughter that needs his help. And when he sees a son or a daughter that needs his help, God does not care who he's with. God does not care who's watching him. God gets down there and he helps his son or daughter come out of what they're in. We claim we're called by his name, but yet won't do what he does. Come on. Amen. I mean, I, amen. I know this is a holiday weekend. You ready for the ribs and chicken? I'm going to help you get to the ribs and chicken today. Amen. But I want you to remember as you're eating some ribs and chicken, there's someone that wished they had crackers. And you've been ready to throw out leftovers because I don't eat leftovers. I eat, I cook something every day. Leftovers are so beneath me. Only those people who really can't afford have to eat leftovers. He sees them. Sees them as they are for what they are, his people. You and I, if we're going to be the servants that bring God glory, the servants that serve God, we got to start seeing our neighbors for who they are. And they are creations of God just like we are. Come on, someone tell the truth, shame the devil. You ain't always been so high class and sophisticated as you are right now. I know how to say the word. I intentionally said it wrong. Amen. But someone say, you get it. That pastor doesn't even know how to say sophisticated. I know how to say sophisticated, but y'all know when y'all get out there in the streets, y'all act sophisticated. Lord knows, some of us are just one generation removed from the farm where you had one good pair of shoes, you had one set of bro games, and unless you were going to work or going to church, you walked around barefooted. Stop, stop, stop acting like you've eaten at Restora Rest Restoration Hardware's new cafe, new, new restaurant all your life. Like, like, like going to the Palm and to Del Frisco's is just every day for you. So it's not even acting like you even got a chance to go to Mad Dogs. You know good and doggone well if mama didn't fix it, you didn't eat it. And mama went out of her way. Daddy broke their neck to raise what you had so that you would have some food on your table. And you ate whatever they put on there. Sit here and play with me if you want to think because I'm younger than you. I don't know some things. I spent my summers on a farm. I spent, my, I spent my former summers with, with, with family members that were much older than me who could teach me some things. To teach me where I came from. Hey, the, one of the biggest shots in, the, shots in the world, I told my uncle I needed to go to the restroom. He said, go over there and use it. I said, there's nothing but a shed over there. He said, go use it. I said, that's a shed. You, got, you keep your equipment. He said, no, no, no equipment is in there. Go use it. And there was something of a commode something of a commode. When I looked down, I could see down into a pit down there. He said, that, he said, he said use that. Now, it's just 20 feet from my house with a running, but he, no, he said, I want you to use this. I want you to understand that it wasn't always like this over here, that we used to have to come out here and use this. And here's the funny thing. There was still a Sears and Robux catalog in there. So I said, where's the paper? He said, it's in there. I said, I see nothing but a series of robust cattle all from 1963. He said, use it. That you would tear off sheets of the series of robots and that you didn't have cotton nail or baby off. I wonder why my grandmother and them could eat anything. Because guess what? When they had the white, may, may, a, amen, they were tough. Amen. Praise God. 
But we've forgotten that. We've acted like we always have had, supposed to have on Johnson and Murphy's. We're always supposed to have Jimmy's shoe. We're always supposed to be wearing St. John's and Brooke Brothers. We're always supposed to be eating at the Palm and Del Frisco's. We forgot that there was a time that we could not even look that way. And yet we see people, we see Bobby and Sally every day in our lives. We look down our nose at them. God says we're spiritually blind. So. God demonstrates just how blind we are to the issues and troubles that his people experience daily. That's the first point. Our second point this morning is amen. God demonstrates that even though we call ourselves his people, we are blind to his will. Now, check this out. Amen. Amen. I need to set something straight here with us. Amen. And it's a lie that we've been believing. Um, and the lie that we've been believing is that um, when God is ready to bless you, he blesses those that deserve to be blessed. So let me tell you what I mean by that. He, deserve, he blesses those who are hard, who put in the work, who are studious, good people who really haven't gone through any, we haven't gone through any problems, haven't caused any problems. The world, the world says that if God is not blessing you the way it thinks God should bless you, then evidently there's something you need to do to get yourself right. I mentioned Job. Job's homeboys, his cut brothers, they, his, his road dogs. Instead of coming to him and saying, Job, how can we pray for him, pray for you? They came and tried to chastise him. Job, you done something wrong. You ought to fall on your knees right now and pray to God for forgiveness. His boys, his aces, his boom coons. Come on, y'all start acting like I'm the only one who knows these terms. Amen, amen, amen. We got some friends, amen, that if something happened to us, they got to die too because they know too many secrets. They know too much about us. If I, I've, I've got about four friends. I've already told them, if I die, there's four plots going to be right beside me because they're all going with me too. I can't, have, I can't stand to have y'all live because someone may get the secrets. Amen. And I, I told them, I said, we're we, we going out like the Egyptians go out. When one person died, the whole family, all the friends had to go too because you know all the secrets. And my wife don't watch out. She's going to be the fifth one. Amen. Because she, she's learning some secrets too. Amen. I can't, can't have it get out in the public. Amen. Praise God. Amen. So, you, you, these your boys. These your girls. And the first time you end something, they say to you, what you do? What you do? The disciples saw the man blind and thought he was, he was uh, 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 a sin. He was being under the punishment. They miss that God was orchestrating a show up and show out moment. Okay. We all love the show up and show out moments. Those are ones that set us off. We get our praise on, we get our dance on, we start running around the sanctuary because he showed up and showed out. But what we miss is the show up and show out moment is a show up and show out moment because of what we were in when he showed up and showed out. We were in something that was bigger than us, that was heavier than us, that was more powerful than us. And God showed up and knocked that thing out like it was nothing. When's the last time you've seen someone that's born blind get their sight back? Don't worry, I'll wait. When's the last time you've seen someone that was born quadriplegic? That means they can't move any muscles. I'm not talking about the person that loses the ability to move in life, but they're born not being able to move. Someone born with some kind of me mental or physical uh, uh, issue that keeps them from functioning normally. When's the last time you see someone born with Down syndromes, get, get over Down syndromes, and become normal at what we think is normal? When's the last time you see someone uh, uh, born with all these problems overcomes it? Not never. And I know that's a double negative, Mom. I know that. But I'm saying that so that we get that. Not never. 
And here it is, God has to show up in your not never situations to do the not never impossible so that you can give God the forever praise. And here it is, all we want to do is to celebrate, to show out, to show up and show out moment instead of celebrating what he has brought us from. Jesus talks about it. He says, there are two men. One was forgiven for $500, another was forgiven for $5,000. Which one do you think had the greater reason to, be for, to praise God? The, 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 the scribe said the one that was forgiven most. Those of us who have been in some situations where we know that the only way we are here today is for God, we have, you, don't have, you ain't got to pump or press us to praise. We're ready to praise when we come through the door. In fact, we're the people that you get tired of seeing because when we come in and say, how you doing? I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost Spirit. God has blessed me. Amen. I ain't got no words. They make you sick. It's not that they want to be offensive. They are just celebrating the goodness of God. See, too many. See, let me tell you something. Let me, let me put my glasses down because y'all got me. I'm about to act a fool in here for y'all, all right? Y'all are too busy. Are you a God about bills? Instead of realizing that you got bills in the first place because you got blessings. Okay, all right. You upset with the house note because the house note's so doggone high. But last time I checked, you were here at church begging me and every other body to touch and agree with you that God would bless you with the house that you now complaining about the house note. Ain't no need to come here talking about them people who the job are crazy. They go, they dog on mine. They think I'm gonna work on Memorial Day. They got another thing coming. But three months ago, you were begging us to touch and agree with you to give you this job. You see, we spend too much time complaining about the blessings of God, not realizing that if God brought us to it, He's gonna bring it to us through it. If God said you were going to have that house, then you ain't got to worry about how you're going to pay for it. If it's his will, it's his bill. If it's his choice, it's his invoice. Stop stressing out about things that are none of your business. Your business is to be in position so that God can use you to bring glory to himself. We got people in here right now, if you knew their back stories, you would be looking at them saying, I don't understand how you are where you are. That's because God did it. God set that thing up to bring us right where we are so that we can be a living testimony. You think God gets credit because the hardest thing you had to do in life was to make jello? My mom testifies and prays every day. Prays to God every day because she can make a dish. She can cook something that's edible that no one would die from from eating. And you don't understand that praise until you realize how many times we had to go to the hospital to have our stomachs pumped because my mama don't cook something that was going to kill us. My mom was one of the few mamas that didn't get the note talking about, we're having a party at school. Would you mind fixing something? She didn't get that note. Her note was, do you mind sending plates and cups? <laughs> Come on, black folks. You know if someone is having a cookout or party or something and you get assigned a plates and cups task, that means that the word is you can't cook and they don't want your food. In fact, let, 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 let me help some folks right now. So that's how you go to a party and you walk in there holding plates and cups. Please understand what that is. They have said in their minds that you are not the one to bring a food dish. They've tasked you with doing something that's in your wheelhouse. It's going to buy paper plates and cups. But if God has got you buying paper plates and cups, you ought to buy the best paper plates and cups you can do because you don't know if God's going to bless someone. If I've been eating with my hands, then a paper plate and cup seems like luxury to me. And see, so here you are upset because you feel that you've been offended. 
how dare Thelma invite me to this prop, prop party and go have me bring the paper. Don't she know my asparagus spinach dip is the best thing in the world? So what her husband don't like it? He ain't, he ain't no good man anyway. Instead of realizing, you know what? There's someone here that's about to be blessed. There's someone here that's about to meet the Lord. And let me come bringing what I have to the altar with thanksgiving. Let me tell you something. One of the reasons why persons don't want the help we give, because we give it in such a foul mood, such a foul display. We have such a foul look on our face with a foul, stanky attitude. And what happened, we, we are so blind, we don't realize that at this moment was a moment that that person been praying for. But this is what we do. I know you hungry here. Here, five dollars. Go get you a Burger King value meal. God, I don't know why you're making me give my five dollars. And you, you, and you know how we do. We always say it so they can hear it. So they walk away looking at the five dollars like, should I get this back? They seem like... But in your bank account, there's a whole lot of $5 bills there. In fact, you getting ready to leave there, you're going to go to Longhorns, the Outbacks, amen, the Cantina 1511, the Firebirds, still complaining, sitting down there having your, having your calamari, fried calamari and lemon, uh, and, and your, 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 uh, age Del Monaco State complaining, God had me give her woman five dollars. She could have got her own five dollars while you eating off the blessing he's giving you. God, there's something God wants to do in your midst. But we aren't putting ourselves there because we're blind. All we can see is what we see. So, first point. God demonstrates that we're blind because we don't see the troubles and issues of the people. The second point, God demonstrates that even though we call ourselves his people, we're blind to his will. Third point, then we're going to go home. Amen. Praise God. Amen. God demonstrates that even though we identify ourselves as his servants, we are blind to the opportunities to serve him. Amen. Amen. Check, check, check this out. Check this out. All right. Okay. So, um, God in the form of Jesus is about to make this man see. Remember Jesus' uh, word is I did not come to be served, I come to serve. He also says it's not the well that need a doctor but the sick. I did not come to save the righteous but the sinner. And even though this brother is, is not a sinner per se, because Jesus declares that they did nothing wrong. The fact is, this brother is in a class of people that is hurting, that is suffering, that, is, that, that could use a blessing. And, and what God wants us to understand is miracles happen, but they happen when we serve. Okay. God told the disciples to feed the 5,000 men, women, and children that were at the seaside. He said, they ain't got to go home, you feed them. The disciples balk at the instructions because the task looks like it's an impossibility. They don't want to feed, i.e. serve, because they don't think that they have enough food to serve. But what they don't realize is that they're right there in the presence of God in the flesh. And God, with God in the flesh, you have more with him than you do on your own. And so five loaves of bread and two fish aren't just five loaves of bread and two fish. They turn out to be enough food to feed approximately 15,000 people. Can you hear the disciples? This man is not blind because he's sinned. This man is blind because... The Lord, my Father, wants to get glory out. Can you hear them? Oh, my God. We're about to have to serve again. We're about to have to work again. Can't Jesus just snap his fingers and the man be, man be, 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 be able to see? We're going to have to do something. And here's a mess up thing. This is one of those situations. He didn't ask them to do anything. 
But he's trying to teach them that if you're going to be a servant, servants are servants because servants serve. And you can't be uh, 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 discouraged. You can't be pushed away by the, 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 the details of your service. Now, let me help you out, all right? Because I know some of you sitting here saying, no, Pastor Al, I'm only serving to this degree, and that's it. Well, let me tell you, I have to come look at you every day. This is my service. God has asked me to shepherd you. And let's be for real. Sometimes you can be a hard something to shepherd. Amen. The, sheep, the rest of the sheep go this way. You go off that way. And here I got to come to get you. To bring you back over here with the rest of the sheep. The whole time talking to you. Talking about, please stay over here. Come on, tell the truth. God gives me a vision. Said we're going this way. Ten of us over here. I ain't going that way because that's not where I think the church should go. That church should go over here. And I'm like, well, God said go over here. You ain't easy to serve. Amen. I, I need a Memorial Day weekend just with Pastor Al. A -a Amen. Amen. Where everyone cooks and I just come to your house and eat. Amen. Praise God. Now, if you ain't that easy to serve. Why are you tripping about the, the terms of service that he's giving us? And in fact, let's be for real. He has already empowered us to do what he did and more. Which means, tell you the truth, there shouldn't be anyone blind in this day and age. Not physically blind or spiritually blind. Persons should see, should see clearly. They should be able to discern everything of God clearly because guess what? You and I are serving. Imagine what life would be like if everywhere we went, the presence of God fell on the people there. In Charlotte, we're on track to have one of the worst years as far as murders. Every day we've gotten up this year, someone is dead. And I have been particularly watching this because I get the news uh, buzz, the news uh, on my phone, there's not been a morning when I have not woken up or awakened and Charlotte Mecklenburg police aren't on the scene with CSI conducting a murder investigation. We're not even halfway through the year yet. That happens Tuesday. No, I'm sorry, not Tuesday, June 30th. That's halfway through the year. And we've already exceeded some years in the past. The rate we're going, this is going to be a record-setting year. And think about this. I don't care if that's only 300 lives lost. That's 300 families that are suffering that should never have to have suffered. 300 families that should be celebrating at the end of the year with their loved ones instead of mourning them. 300 families that should be basking in the glory of God. But guess what? Here we are. We're too afraid to say anything because we don't want people that are connected to us to say, oh, there's a troublemaker. We're too busy to hold our uh, elected officials accountable because we don't want to be one of those that rocks the boat. We don't want to be one of those that is seen as going against our own. But here's the thing. It ain't going to stop until we step out on faith and be who God is calling we to be. Hunger. There should be no such thing as hunger. You and I have been given the power to multiply food. Amen. Watch. I'm going to show you something. My mom and some folks coming over there. I'm going to show you how to multiply. I'm going to cut them ribs up. Amen. And they're each going to get a couple ribs. Amen. Praise God. I'm not saying that they can't have more. But I'm saying I'm multiplying the food. So they can have as much as they want and be full. But guess what? You can do the same thing. You ain't eating the whole chicken by yourself. Come on, tell the truth. Shame the devil sometimes. Half of us don't even like the white meat anyway. Come on, be for real. That, that chicken breast be the one thing sitting there growing legs. Because we don't eat the, 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 the thighs, the drumsticks, and maybe the wings. But them, that breast still be on there. Not, not realizing that that breast is enough to bless someone. And you ain't got to look for you ain't got. You, you, you don't have to get in your car and drive across the town. I bet you if you look across 
the street, someone is standing in the need. And that need may not look like you think it looks, because guess what? A present with good wrapping always looks like it's more valuable on the outside than it is on the inside. My best friend and I, Chuck, we, we pride ourselves in being cheap. Amen. We grew up being cheap. Uh, amen. Praise God. And we're trying to get gifts. We give each other a gift. Had this beautiful wrapping on it because it came free. You know, if you go to certain stores, they'll wrap it for free. So if it's free, we cheap, give me the best one. And so we get excited, like, oh, man, you shouldn't have gone out your way. Oh, I didn't go out my way. Just do it. And open the gift. Be like, and after all that rapping, I expected you this year is going to be the year we weren't going to be cheap. And we look at each other and say, no, we cheap. Amen. People have wrapped the gift. They have wrapped their lives in a way that it doesn't look like they're hurting. But God has called you to serve. So I'm, getting, I'm finished. I'm getting ready to sit down. So let me end it like this. Because Jesus served, we know this story. Eventually, this man is going to get his sight. In fact, next week, I'm going to deal with this. This is why I want you to come back. I want, I'm going to deal with how do we uh, manage, stay faithful in the in-between time, the interim, the meantime, where we, know, where we see what the problem is, we know there's a solution over here, but in this space right here, how do we deal with it? How do we remain faithful and not grumble? The children of Israel knew where they were going. It's just that between leaving Egypt and getting there, they complained the whole way. And they should not complain because where God was sending them was a land full of, of milk and honey, houses that they did not build, uh, uh, lands that they did not plant a crop and harvest. Everything was already, they should have been singing and celebrating. In fact, if they had, the journey wouldn't have taken 40 years. It would have taken 17 months months. That's what we're going to deal with next week. Imagine where you can be if you start complaining. This brother, we never hear from him, but we're going to make some supposition. We're going to make some sanctified guesses as to what his life looked like for 47 years living it as a blind man. And God is saying he's going to bless us, but how do we deal with until he gets there to bless us? Amen. Amen. How do, how do we deal? You know, you know this, this was Saul's problem. Saul couldn't wait for Samuel to get there. Could have had the world if he waited. But he couldn't wait. Same thing here. What would we get if we would just wait? I know we're going to see. I know he's going to bless us. I know you're going to rise out of this thing. I know you're going to get stronger. I know you're going to get better. I know your family's going to be healed. I know you're going to be healed. I know y'all are going to be reconciled. I know you're going to be employed. I know you're going to be educated. I know you're going to receive all these wonderful things from God because God's word is true. It shall not fail. It shall not come back to him, boy. Whatever he said he's going to do, that's what he's going to do. But before he does it, you and I got to be able to see. In fact, you ought to walk around this week looking like this. When people looking at you, you ought to tell them, I'm trying to see. Pastor Al told me that God wants me to see. You can't see with your eyes closed. You got to open them things. You got to open your eyes and you got to say, God, let me notice some things. Just because Brother Sean is sitting here uh, praising God right now doesn't mean that he doesn't need a call in the middle of the week and say, Brother, I'm thinking about you. I love you and I want you to know that God has got you. Just because Deacon Kenzie is sitting here with her purple outfit on trying to represent for the bros today, for the Omegas today. Amen. Praise God. She, she's, she, she's looking out for the, for the brothers today. Just because she looks good in her purple doesn't mean that she couldn't use a little time this week spent ministering to her and talking to her. Just because someone looks like they got it together does not mean they have it together. And if you really want to see, ask God to open your eyes regarding what someone's going Going through. Ask God to sensitize your heart. Ask God to give you the words. Ask God to give you the insight. Ask God to give you the. In fact, for some of us, we just need to show up and do 
nothing because a ministry of presence says more to someone than our testimonies ever could. Ask God to put you in a place where you can exercise your ministry of presence, where you can be a blessing to someone so that someone walks away giving God the glory. Someone walks away saying how good and how awesome our God is. Someone walks away talking about, I don't know about you, but you ought to give God a chance. Someone walks away saying, taste and see how good the glory of God is. Someone walks away saying that he is God and there is no other. Someone walks away declaring by faith that they have met the Lord God face to face and their lives have been changed. Someone should walk away with a new perspective. All because you can now see. Amen. Amen. Let me do this. Let me not assume that everyone under my voice is saved, that they know God and, and know Jesus Christ, and they've accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Let me help you understand something. You'll never be able to see if you first don't accept God. You can't see spiritually. You can't see as God wants you to see if you aren't connected to him and living in him. It's only as you are connected to him living in him that God opens your eyes with revelation, that God makes you see things that you know, no one else can see. And unless you're going to get connected to God, you'll never be able to see. So this sermon was, 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 was not meant for anything for you. God wants you to see. And he wants you to serve. In order to do that, you and I have to be connected with him. So in the privacy of your own hearts, and I want us to bow our heads, close our eyes, and pray this prayer with me. Dear Father God, thank you, God, for loving me so much that even in my life, all the time that I have spent spiritually blind, you've been looking out for me. You've been seeing for me and discerning for me and guiding me through dangers both seen and unseen, to get me to this place right now. Father God, I thank you for that, and I praise you for that. And recognizing and realizing what you've done for me, what you're doing for me, Father God, I declare right now that I want more of you. I want you every day in my life present with me. I want you, God, to fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I want you, God, to take me to places I can only dream of and do things with me that I've only read about. Father God, I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord to your glory, that he did come, he did live, he did minister, he did serve. And then one day he was arrested, tried, and convicted. And that night he was beaten to within an inch of his life cruelly, horribly mistreated. And then the next morning, he was forced to carry his own cross to Golgotha, where they hung him between two thieves. And he stayed there all day long, God. And when the time came for him to die, he died on that cross. And he was buried in a, buried, a borrowed tomb, where he stayed for three days. And on the third morning, he got up with all power in his hands, and he currently sits on the right side of the throne making intercession for me and my neighbors, God. I believe by faith in Jesus. And I declare right now that he is my Lord and Savior and that I am saved, that I am a new creature, that old has passed away, and behold, all things have become new. And God, being a new creature, I leave this place with a new perspective, with my sight becoming restored and becoming clear. And I leave here, God, with the ability to start discerning things, God, as you would have me to discern. And I pray, God, that as I grow in you and with you, that, God, you will continue to open my eyes, continue to give me spiritual insight, continue to give me spiritual discernment, so that, God, as I serve, I bring you glory, honor, and praise. It is in your son's mighty, matchless, marvelous, magnificent name that we do pray. Amen. Amen. 
if you pray that prayer for the very first time, you, today you pray what we call the sinner's prayer. Every one of us who are saved had to pray it. Every one of us went through this process. Now, if we were not in pandemic protocol, I would have you come down here, hug on you, love on you, uh, give you some encouraging words, and we would start the process of your spiritual grow, growth and development right now, okay? Coronavirus has put a damper on that, but it has not stopped it. So we have to do it a different way. This is what I want you to do. I want you to send me an email. Or if you're on Facebook, go to my Facebook profile, Al Kennedy, and send me an email, Pastor Al Kennedy III at gmail.com. It's on the screen. And I want you to tell me that today you met Christ, you accepted Christ, and you're starting your walk. We believe that God does in the spirit what he does in the natural. We don't birth babies and send them over the corner and say, hey, baby, take care of yourself. Raise yourself, clothe yourself, feed yourself, change yourself. Instead, we believe that parents will love on these babies, give them what they need, nurture them so they're able to grow and become productive citizens of our society. Same thing in the spirit. We don't put someone, you in the corner and say, hey, grow on your own. No, we walk with you, talk with you, help you mature in Christ so that you become a faith-wielding, faith-believing disciple and steward of Christ that serves him. Amen. So send me that email so we can begin that walk together. Amen. Amen. So let me ask, are we all on one accord? Are we all good? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Now let's do this. Let's have our closing word of prayer that we're going to get busy and join this day that the Lord has made. Dear Father God, creator of the heavens and the earth, God, we thank you, God, for you meeting us right here in the sanctuary this morning. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the praise and worship. We thank you for the prayers. We thank you for the expressions of kindness and welcome, God. We thank you for every aspect of this worship service because, God, we know that because of you, God, we are here. Because of you, we have purpose. Because of you, we have being. Because of you, we have existence. And Father God, we celebrate that. Now, God, as we leave this place, we leave here empowered and encouraged and equipped to be the servants god and bring you glory walk with us be with us this week protect us and keep us so we return again and allow us to walk in your glory it's in your sons mighty matchless marvelous magnificent name that we do pray amen amen everyone amen please have a blessed week amen i was gonna say a blessed day well have a blessed week amen <laughs>